from Sweet Summer in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. B I T C H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I... I'm your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. So I made an offhanded comment on the air that I... I bought a house, a second house. I I have a house that I've uh, owned for the last uh, almost 11 years that I love very much. And I decided that I was going to buy a second home. And it's been a plan of mine for years. And unlike some of the people who make knee-jerk decisions, make stupid decisions in their lives as a result... That call this program. I have taken my sweet time watching the real estate market, waiting for it to start cratering, which it has begun to do, waiting for a window of opportunity where, though the market is cratering, that uh, mortgage rates would start to creep down, which they have, and then researching particular areas where I wanted to buy a house. My original plan was the Napa Valley, and I had actually looked at some homes in the Napa Valley because I love that wine country. But um, after traveling there many times, and I still love to go there, uh, it became apparent to me that the six-hour drive there and six hours back would inhibit my regular use of that house. And so I uh, I decided to make another plan. And uh, this year, when I was traveling to uh, Los Olivos, an area north of uh, Santa Barbara, I uh, spent uh, a weekend at a guest house at a winery and found that uh, this area was also spectacular, and I could drive there in less than two hours. So I could use the house all the time, take a long weekend, take a vacation. You name it. Um, it is a 4,000 square foot house and it's uh, 20 acres. 20 acres of land. Can you even imagine 20 acres of land? I hardly can. I'll tell you that. But uh, Friday, we reached agreement on uh, a price and I signed uh, signed the paperwork. And I'll be closing on the deal soon. And I've uh, given my deposit, and I'm ready to go, and I'm going to have a second home. And now, look, between calls I got on the air and uh, some of the calls of uh, people who are waiting to get on the air, a number of people were upset because I said things like, these are the things you can do in your life when you don't spend your money on Chuck E. Cheese or buying your wife handbags or paying alimony or paying child support. This is one of the things you can do. It's also one of the things you can do when you take some risks, work hard, go where the work is, build yourself a little career, rather than uh, going to community college or trade school or whatever, and then uh, going off into gun repair or whatever those people do. That apparently has got a lot of people upset, and uh, now I'm seeing people calling in and saying things like, well, money isn't everything. Well, you know, I'll tell you something about money. Money isn't everything, is something that people say when they don't have money. It's not everything. 
But your life's a lot better with it than without it. Trust me. I grew up without it. I not only grew up without it, I didn't make a decent living until I was 28 years old. That was when I first started seeing a decent paycheck at 28. And that was after years of, of working at this. So I was absolutely thrilled to realize three big dreams in my life. This is the third of three. One was doing what I do for a living and enjoying the hell out of it. Two was having a house in the Hollywood Hills. It was a dream of mine since I was a kid. And my third dream is to have a weekend home somewhere north of me here in California. It was a later dream. And now I'm realizing. And I don't have any women interfering with my decision. I don't have the expense of sending a child to college or sending him to preschool or um, paying those bills. I just don't have to do it. And the proof is in the pudding. And I don't understand all you people who call up here and start to give me a hard time about this or who try to tell me how unhappy, how miserable I am or how I'm some kind of a creep or a jerk or whatever uh, because I decided to, uh, uh, to, to save and invest and hoard my resources for opportunities to do things like buying a great home as I'm, as I'm doing for the second time. And by the way, it's the fifth home I've owned. It's the second one I'm holding at the same time. But uh, I've owned other homes. And um, this time around, uh, I own a home in Boston. I own a home in Phoenix. I've done this before. But now I've got two homes here in uh, Southern California. They still call it Southern California up in Santa Barbara County. Okay. To me, that's like Central California, but there you go. But, um, you know, if, if you like working uh, at the gas station or you like working at the supermarket, going boop, 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 boop all day, scanning people's groceries, if you like shine and shoes, that's fantastic. Good for you if you find uh, happiness doing that. I think it's great. Uh, but don't begrudge people like me who love doing what I love to do, which is instead of stupidly handing out money to everybody I ever had sex with, and their offspring. I worked and saved and invested and planned, and now I'm getting exactly what I deserve. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. I mean, why is this so off-putting to some of you? What is the problem? Would you rather I be some loser? Would you rather I uh, be handing my money out? I mean, uh, Johnny Carson was my idol. But it was clear in my mind that uh, over the years, Johnny Carson had this great career, but in his personal life, he was paying out all this money and alimony and child support and everything. <laughs> he used to make jokes about it on TV when I was a kid. But I always wondered, like, why do that? Especially since sex is so readily available and so is birth control. I don't have to knock people up. I don't have to marry somebody to have sex with them. And I don't have to give them money. And all of the things I teach you to do, I have followed my own advice, and look where I'm at now. You know, and if uh, if you're a greeter at Walmart, look where you are now, okay? And I think that tells you everything you need to know. Why would anybody have a problem with this? Can you explain that to me? Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Hey. Yeah. Um, you're cool. Thank you. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like a show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Chris on the Tom like a show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you doing? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. All right, look. I have a different perspective on your situation and how the rest of the world's situation is. All right, look, there are certain people out there that do have special opportunities. Is this Vinny Barbarino? Who is this? This is Chris. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. It's okay. thought you were Vinny Barbarino. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so this is my perspective on your situation and the rest of the world. 
everyone has a special opportunity in their life. You can try as hard as you want, and sometimes as hard as you want to try, it doesn't work out. And though some people do get the opportunity like yourself, which you got on the radio, and you do make plenty of money. And Wait, do you think I got this opportunity like uh, the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes? No, 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 I went to my I mailbox one day and had a letter from Robert H. Treller, and I uh, I subscribed to Popular Science and Popular Mechanics, and I got a radio career. You of think course, that's how it worked? Of course, of course. You, you really, try you, hard. You, Every, a lot of people try very hard, and they don't get it, though. You can't be saying well, you're the only I, one. I, I tried so hard. I don't happen to agree with that, by the way. I think anybody who wants it badly enough can do it. Can do it, exactly, if they have the right opportunity. No, no, if they work hard enough. Okay, and my next situation is... Which is is, a, is different. Yeah, this is a different one. I wanted to get you with you on two different No, what, never mind. Go ahead. Okay, and this next one is with your situation with the kids. You, if you yes, Vinny, go you ahead. Could have, you could afford it the kids if you want. You could afford kids if you wanted to buy that second house also. You no, have the money no, you can't. That. No, you can't do that. You can't because when you buy a second house, let me tell you, because I'm going through it right now. First, you've got to put out a huge down payment, which is probably more than you've made in your entire life, or you have probably, probably. more than your parents have made in their entire life. Uh, I've also got to pay uh, thirty thousand dollars a year in property taxes. I've got to pay homeowners insurance. I've got to pay uh, uh, other insurance like a fire, flood, earthquake insurance, what have you. Yeah, and you will utilities. be making all that money this year off that radio, thank you, right? Well, but the point is, uh, why would I want to spend additional money then on a child? Because that's the way the world turns. You need what do you to mean, that's, What does that mean, that's the way the world turns? If you stop having kids, the, the world's going to end, right? No, it's not. I, You know, I'm 51, I haven't had kids, and the world's still, be, it's still here. Thanks to you, though. That's only you, and that's only you by yourself. If everyone went on your Everyone word, doesn't go, you know what? The, the, the poor and the stupid, they crank out lots and lots of children. And they, they are more than making up the difference. Mm -hmm. All right. So let them have children because they have no idea how it's holding them back. They have no idea how much it's costing them. They don't know. That's true. They don't know. So, so, so they're the ones having all the kids. Let them do it. But that is what humanity is. You were put on this earth to reproduce. How do you know we were put on this earth to do? Because that's the way it is. Who that's says? What body's made for. Who says? That's the way the cells are for. That's what your body was made for. That's why you have all those organisms to make. Really? Why do you have nipples? The, for women, the breast. No, you. Why do you have nipples? Do you? Why do you have nipples? To tell you the truth, I cannot answer that. Why I'm not? Why do you know? Reason. Why do you know the answer to this, but not that? Because I haven't done the study of my nipples. <laughs> Oh, I know That's I don't it. want to do it. I'll tell you that, Vinny. Yeah, me either. But uh, I, I'm just saying that... Here's an example of the kind of person who disagrees with me. I think he speaks for himself. I, I, I guess that, you know, you are right on that, Tom, but it, you, uh, you're getting me. I guess you're getting me. <laughs> the, the women that you attract... Would be called gold diggers in your situation. Only if they only if they only if they got any gold out of me, which they don't. They don't exactly, but you know sometimes they hope for that. Even I don't care what they're the hoping for. Say, no, I don't give money out to the when, women if, I'm with. When, the minute they try to get it, I drop kick them to the uprights. Uh, I understand that too, but when you have money like that, you you attract women for that reason. So what? And when you when you don't have money, women that are attracted to you are attracted to you because of what you I are. I don't care. Well, you know what I am? I'm a rich, famous radio personality. Yeah, th that's thanks. So to if they're attracted to me luck. because oh luck, here's the luck. I knew the luck thing was coming. Everyone works their whole life, sir. Like, Every, um, yeah, but they don't, they don't all work. They don't all work smart, and they don't all work uh, the right way. They just don't. I understand that. It's, they didn't try. By the way, course, let's start with this, Chris. What college are you attending right now? Between I'm puffs of marijuana, Monica right now, Santa Monica College. Yes, yeah, Santa Monica College. So you're going Santa to a community college. Yeah, a community college. I'm Is that right because now. you were not smart enough to go to a real college, or no, because? No, because it takes three years. You, I can come here, and then from here I can transfer to a better college. Well, why aren't you at a better be college doing? now? Because it takes time. I didn't do as no. good as I wanted. Oh, to. Oh, why was that? Why was that? 
because I went the wrong direction and I screwed around with my friends that was not right. Ah. And that's where I got messed up in my life and I I'm going to make that a better. Mm. So what is your big career plan here at Santa Monica College? Uh, right now I'm studying music and I'm planning to be a music producer, which is a very good job. Very good job. Hardworking, kid. paid a lot of money. Yeah? You know anything about that business? I do know a lot about that business. How do you know anything about that business? Because that's what I've been studying for the last year and a half. Ooh, a year and a half. Not a very long time. Wow. I'm still, young. I'm still young. I'm not up in my age yet. I'm a still a young man, and I'm trying hard. But, you know, not everyone gets that special. Well, what I think you should do is get married now and have as many children as you possibly can. And then go on and see how successful you'll be as a music producer. That's what a lot of people do, though, before. No, if go ahead and these, do it. Do it. Look at all of these famous people. I, uh, do you have a girlfriend? It's time to get married. Come on. I want you to get married now. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, you know, I did call into your show about a year ago. Hey. I apologize, apologize. She messed me over. Yeah, but, well, and who told you you were stupid to have a girlfriend? That would have been you, yes. Yeah. You tell me And that. Well, was I right? Um, yeah, you were right. Uh-huh. So you think maybe I know something about this other stuff, too? Well, of course. I'm not saying you don't know. But some people just aren't as lucky as other people. There's no saying. luck involved. You know what? When I was in high school, I didn't screw around with my buddies. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, would, that had nothing to do with luck, son. Yeah, I understand. See, the reason you're not as successful as other people is because, for example, you're not go you're not going to USC or UCLA. You couldn't get not in at the moment. You couldn't get in because you screwed around with your buddies in high school. That, uh, this that, has nothing to do with. But do you understand this? Yeah, because you you because effed up because you effed up in high right. school. That's right. Uh, so so as you can see, there's an example of how luck has nothing to do with this. It, you yeah. effed yourself. You effed yourself over. I can't. Yeah, I agree on that. I do agree. But see, back in and the, the day, people who aren't successful. That's why. I yeah, I understand. I under, okay. All right, Tom, you got me on that one, <laughs> Mister Cotta. <laughs> That's a funny one. All right, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. <laughs> It's Anne on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Hello. How many times do I have to say hello? From you as many times as you want, Tom. Oh, really? Really. I I'm calling to hit you up. I wanted to rent a room in Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what rents go for in uh, Santa Barbara? Actually, I do. That's why I was calling. <laughs> So you know they're pretty expensive, right? Pretty expensive. And you've got cashola? I do. Really? Really. I, I, I make over six figures. And I'm 38. I have no children. I'm I'm cute. Cute. Uh, well, you'd have to check out for yourself. But I'm just asking for a room. That's all I'm asking for. Yes, I understand. And how would you be able to get to your job if you were uh, 100 miles away? Well, you know, I sell capital equipment. So, actually, that's part of my territory. So you'll need to rent my phone also? No, not necessary. I have a cell phone. <laughs> but, you know, I will be a good drinking buddy for you. Is that so? Definitely. Only if you can hook me up with hot chicks. No problem. <laughs> I need hot chicks. No problem. By no the problem. way, I, I have found just in one weekend, just that phrase, 20 acres. Do you know how many chicks overhear that and come up to you? Well, I, I know just this one. I, I, I could tell. Sounds like you'll be crawling all over my 20 acres, for God's sake. Wow. That's what I'm telling you, boys. You can have kids and go to Chuck E. Cheese, or you can save your money and tell people you've got 20 acres. Jason? On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, man, remember a couple days ago you were talking about uh, the guy that uh, that messed up and, and he's the parking attendant guy that, that waves you through, waves your car through these structures and stuff yes. like that? I am that guy. I am a valet. And I haven't listened to you in the past. I, I have friends that listen to you. 
and have told me to listen to you. But whenever I listen to the radio, I'm in the car. I'm usually rocking out. But uh, the recent events in my life have prompted me to listen to your radio broadcast. And I am 24 years old, went out to a nightclub, met a hot chick, started dating her, got her pregnant. Uh, I have a son now. He's 19 months old. We are no longer together, and I'm pulling my hair out. Why did you do that? Um, desperation. You were desperate to have a baby. I wasn't desperate to have a baby. I was desperate to feel love and have a girlfriend and just... And I you let her talk you into having a baby? Um, no. I... It, it was the heat of the moment, unprotected. Why did you do that? I don't know, Tom. I don't know. Well, see, again, this has nothing to do with luck. Here's another example of what I was just talking about with the other guy, Vinny Barbarino. This has nothing to do with luck. No, it's, a, it's got nothing to do with luck. I don't, I don't have any children, and that's why I'm standing where I'm standing. Exactly. Exactly. And, um... I, I, I love my son now that he's 19 months old. He's in my life. I love him to death. I just, I can't afford him. Uh, me and her are on pretty good terms, but, I mean, we're never going to be together again. And here I am working as a freaking valet, making peanuts, struggling, trying to get another job. It's kind of hard to make a living stealing change out of people's uh, change uh, drawers here and <laughs> CDs out of their glove compartment. It's kind of hard to make a living on that. Oh, man, the roaches in the ashtray. <laughs> and and are, you, are you Caucasian by any chance? Yeah, I'm, I'm white. And did you, did you learn how to speak a foreign language to do this job? No. <laughs> No, all you need is a high school diploma. How do you speak to the other employees? Uh, they're all pretty much dorks in high school or right out of high school or lonely, old, weird-looking men. And I'm the only pretty good-looking young guy that doesn't have his crap together in the group. But uh, it's just, it's a dead-end it's a dead end job. I'm trying to get this internship with the, uh, a man that I know that owns a production company. But oh, you want to get in touch with Vinny Barbarino there at Santa Monica College? He's studying music producing. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, Tom. I don't know what I'm doing. I just, I uh, I messed up big, and I wish I would have uh, been listening to you, you know, a couple of years ago when I had opportunities that I that I passed up, and I feel really bad about it, and I really don't know what to do. Well, I mean, certainly feeling bad about it is the first step. At least realizing that you effed up. Yeah, I do I do realize that I effed up. I just, I need to take the next indicated step, and I don't know what that is. Well, what, whatever the next step is, make sure you don't get yourself into another stupid situation. Stupid, and I know, and you know what? I still do stupid stuff like that, Tom. Well, <laughs> yeah. you, you, where, by the way, are your parents still together? Yeah, my parents are, to, are together. Where's your dad? Uh, he, I don't, that's a whole other story in and of itself. Um, uh, there had to be an issue, just from the sound of you. There's an issue. I could tell. Big time. You need to find a strong male role model. I have none. Well, you need to make friends and find somebody who will tell you how to stop being such a pussy. <laughs> And to start right. doing things that are good for you and stop worrying about what's good for other people. People pleaser. That's my problem. I can tell. <laughs> I know people like you. That's why I asked if your parents were still together, because that usually indicates an absent father or just a father who uh, is pussy whipped. Yeah, I, uh, they're together, but I've, I had a really rough upbringing. Yikes. And it's a very, very twisted. Oh, boy. Well, I wish I had time for another twisted story because this show is full of them. But uh, my uh, short-term recommendation for you is you don't have much room for error. <laughs> uh, you really have to do the right thing next time, and so you have to be more deliberate. No more knocking anybody up. No more sex without a condom. No more things done in the heat of the moment because you simply can't afford those. <laughs>
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You are just almost unbearable, you know that? You're so pig-headed. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Mike is showing 1 800 5800 Tom coming to you from Hollywood. And uh, it all started out with an offhanded remark I made. I just mentioned the fact that on Friday I signed the papers and bought a house, a second house. Uh, this one up north of Santa Barbara. And uh, it's 20 acres. And um, just like uh, my first house, it is a visual representation of everything I've worked for, everything I have accomplished. And uh, boy, some people just get very angry about this stuff. It uh, blows me away. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. This is Ray on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay, Ray. Good. Hey, I've been listening to what you said a little earlier about children. And uh, I think that's your opinion. I don't think your opinion goes for everybody. Well, People... first of all, first of all, uh, the opinion is based on my belief, which was borne out in the facts in an article in Business Week that's linked up on our web page uh, uh, about whether having kids is a fool's game. Uh, that uh, having children is an extremely uh, heavy expense. Oh, I agree. I agree. And, it's a heavy expense. Yeah, but I mean, it's way heavier than it ever was. Well. Barring yes, and a house costs more than it did in 1960, whatever when it was. No, 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 no. But no, but it's more. more. It's more than that because the cost of raising a child is now, as a percentage of your family budget, ten times what it was in 1960. So, in other words, it cost one percent of your family budget to raise a child in 1960. It is now ten percent of your family budget. And. If all you're worried about is money, then yeah, that, then I would say don't have kids. Well, you have to worry about money. You you do have to worry about money to an extent. You should worry more, I think, if money really doesn't mean anything when your health is bad. Well, you know? but when you have, but let me tell you something. When you've got money, you've got the best health insurance. I have what's called a concierge doctor. You know how doctors don't make house calls anymore? Right. Mine does. Well, that, that, that when I need a doc, when I need a doctor, you, you, you bring up when well, you brought up health. You know, when I need a doctor, uh, the doctor is available to me twenty four seven via direct cell phone, and will come to my home if I need him. Right, but if he tells you you got terminal cancer, it ain't going to help you. Well, get having children, having guys. children is not going to help you with terminal cancer either. Exactly right, but but, but I will tell you what: is, if I have, I will tell you that, something: if I have cancer. I would much rather have the money to go to the best hospitals, the best doctors, go anywhere in the world that's necessary, than to be forced to go to an HMO and sit behind all those people and wait for a service. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Which but people with point, children have to this, do. My point is this. Money isn't going to buy you. If you're going to die, you're going to die. No, right? that's not See, true. That is not true. That, that, that is not true. That, that, that is not true. The people with more money, you're, no you're just, the, the you are in reason. denial. People people with more money get better medical care. It's just a fact, and there's nothing you can do about it. And there are people who get cancer who can afford better care that have a better shot at surviving than people who don't have money at all. I, I, I believe that. I, I say that's right. But my point is this. My point is that, is that money, if you want, however you want to spend your money as an adult with who's got a free thinking mind, consenting, if you want to spend it on having your kids, having kids and bringing them up and having them have a good life, that's your opinion. That's your well, it's your opinion, but, you, but your quality of life will suffer. That's the fact. Well, well, my my monetary quality of life might suffer, but see, see you don't have the monetary. The money, son, the money son. does have a direct impact on the quality of your life. Uh, on on certain things, you can't you can't. Uh, when I have a son and I see him smile or learn something and come to me and say, you know, Daddy, I love you, or Daddy, I you know, I appreciate this, or thanks a lot, Daddy. Nobody can. I can't buy that from anybody that will mean something. Mm -hmm. from. I have a nephew who I have a good relationship with. And I have many of the same experiences you do without the expense or the responsibility. 
Well, that's true. And he's your nephew, and at the end of the day, you send him away, and, and that's what you want. That's what you want. Right. I like having pretty my good. son and, and him doing that. And I think that a lot well, of Well, you have every right to do that, but, but yeah, financially, right. it's going to cost you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over the course of your life. Which I am willing to. To do. All right. That's, the, that's what, that's what I'm, I'm yeah, You have every right to do it. You have every right to do it. And, uh, you know, when my car's a little pinging or a little knocking, I'll take it into you. I think it's great. 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Bobby on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. The word misogynist, maybe a lot of your viewers don't know what it means. Uh, I know what it means. Well, how many uh, viewers do you think I have? Lots. Really? Yeah. Is there a camera in this room that I'm not aware of? No, a misogynist. <laughs> Nobody is watching this show. I have no viewers. No, but you can explain what the term means. I can't explain it to viewers. I don't have any. Misogynist, Tom. You don't, it's I, a, it's a, do you know what a viewer is? Do you, do you look that word up? You have listeners, Tom. Oh, listeners, yes. And why there's no female equivalent to that word? To what word? Misogynist. Well, I'm not. Do you? Uh, are you a lexicographer? Maybe you can tell us. A misogynist is, a, is a, a heterosexual male who uses women for sex only. Well, that is actually not what a misogynist is, but uh, that's okay. Go ahead. That's my comment. That's not what a misogynist is. Okay, explain it. Yeah, no, no, you know what? Why don't you take out a dictionary, which you just claim to have done? Why don't you take out a dictionary for real this time and look the word up yourself? All right, Tom, I will. All right, good. Oh, my God. And while you're at it, look at the word stupid, and you'll see your photograph right there listed next to the word. Jesus. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Joel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, basically, you need to slap some sense into my head. Um, I don't know. It's been, I met this girl about a month and a half ago, two months, and, you know, I met her at some kind of, it wasn't even a club. It was at some batting cages, and um, she seems really cool and everything, and then she told me that she's not, uh, able to have kids, what do you call it? Uh, uh, she's not fertile. So anyways, here I go, and we start having sex with her. Why did you do that? <sighs> that, that? Exactly what, I mean, that's that's my question. I, I can't answer it to myself. I need somebody to answer me. Uh, why am I doing it, you know? Because you're an idiot. <laughs> I, I, oh, my gosh, I just... I don't know why I'm doing this, Tom. I'm seriously, I don't have any kids. I'm not looking forward to having any kids. Well, don't worry. That's happening. That's going to happen now. I got everything rolling my way. You know, I have a nice car. You have a nice job. And some uh, people like you are simply self-destructive. Jeez. Uh, uh, oh, my gosh. I just, I, I don't want to break up with her because, you know, she's pretty cool. She like, even though she knows I make good money. She doesn't let me pay for things. I'm like, what the heck? That, that's that's cool in a way. Because she's campaigning to become your wife and ultimately get you to pay for things, including the child she's going to have when she says, my goodness, it's a miracle. My doctor said I couldn't conceive. I can't believe it. Aren't we lucky, honey? Isn't this great? Yeah, that doesn't sound that great. I mean... That's what she's going to say. Yeah, but... And all right. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess you know. Uh, I guess I'll just have the whole day. She already, she's already talking about. Oh, well, my parents are going to get divorced, and if they get divorced, they're going to move out of out of state, and I don't want to go out there with them. Yeah, she'd like to move in with you. Uh, 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 you know, I hope I get to move in with you. There and, we go. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like, like what the hell? Like, I just don't get what. Uh, why is she trying to do this to me? Why do you care? Know? Why are you stupid enough to have sex without a condom? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I, I, that, that's very true. That's I'm just I'm just being as uh, stupid as I, a guy can be right now. Yes, you are. I don't, know. Uh, I don't know. A couple a couple weeks ago, I got not stopped by a cop, but I kind of like. Hey, watch your mouth. We're on the air. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. I was drunk and I was just taking the last shot and I. For some reason or another, I did not get a DUI ticket. It was the luckiest day of my life. 
and I don't know for some. And now I'm here again, just trying to mess up my life again. You know, a DUI would have messed up my life. And now, why I'm are you doing these things? Why are you such a loser? I'm turning into a loser. I'll tell you that. Yeah, what college did you go to? Uh, I'm going to San Bernardino College right now. You're 24. Why are you still in the 13th grade? <laughs> uh, I'm just loser. Oh my gosh! I I know. I mean, I don't have a bad job. I'm just trying to ex exceed in what I do. You're, and you're trying to what? Exceed in what I do. You know, like maybe you know. you're trying to succeed in what you do. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's what I'm trying to do. I, uh, yeah, I'm succeeding in what I do, uh, but I'm just. I what? See what? That. Why? What college were you going to when you were 18? Kitsis College. And then 19. I went over to DeVry. I dropped out of Citrus College to go to DeVry. And then at 20? Uh, I wasn't going to college. I dropped out of DeVry. Right. 21? I started going to Riverside College. 22? Uh, stayed at Riverside. 23? San Bernardino. <laughs> and yeah. and, and uh, why is this, son? Uh, the jumping around or why? Yeah, well, I, that, yeah, let's, let's oh, stick with that for a second. Not that you can stick with anything for a second. <laughs> you're right. You're right about that. You're right you see, about that. let me tell you something, Joel. I have real respect. It's going to sound crazy. I have real respect for people who commit suicide. You know why? They put the gun to their head and it goes blam and their brains are all over the wall and that's it. And that takes real guts. You know what? There are people like you who don't have the guts to do that, so you kill yourself slowly. Right? You don't even have the guts to put the gun to your head. I've never thought about it that way, but yeah, you know what? You just, you're slapping some sense into me. Keep, keep on going. That's what you're doing. You're killing yourself. You don't even have the guts to do it all in one fell swoop. One year it's DeVry, one year it's Riverside, one year it's San Bernardino, one year it's nothing. One year it's driving drunk and almost getting arrested. And God forbid, instead of getting arrested for a DUI, maybe you just drive drunk into a brick wall. Uh, next year is having a freaking kid. Well, that's where you're heading, son. Uh, should I get rid of her now or wait till she gets me my iPod for Christmas? Stop it. <laughs> oh, my God, Tom. Where is your father? He's at home. Yeah, have you talked to him? No, I, I, I don't talk to him about pretty much. Is he married to your mother? I talk to my mom a lot. No, no. Are they married to each other? Yes, they are. Do they live with each other? Yes, they do. Do you live in their home? Yes, I do. Because you're a loser. Right? That, uh, well, I live in a, I could live alone. I do make the money to live alone. I live with them because... We are able to have a bigger house if I live with them. And I just, if I don't have, if I have. No and mommy does around. your laundry and mommy makes your dinner for you. Exactly. <laughs> and you're just a little boy who won't grow up, right? And that's what I love the most. If I'm not, if, if I'm not, you know. And you love that. Well, I, I love being at home. I love having a warm Dinner, you know. Yeah, well, that's why you never do a goddamn thing with your life. You're just a loser who is slowly killing yourself. So tell me what's going to happen once if I stay with her. She's going to have, have a baby, a and you're going to be paying child support for the next 20 years. Because she's going to end up divorcing me. Or oh, be well, you mar are you going to marry her, too? That's great. <laughs> okay, she's going to end up breaking up with me and leaving the kid there with me. Right. By the way, by the way, son, I need some uh, need some landscaping done. Will you be available? It's the Tom Likas Show.